Let's talk about the future of humanity. Heavy subject, I know, but it's one that Elon Musk is heavily invested in right now. Is our destiny to remain here on Earth, or does our future lie somewhere far beyond? Somewhere like the planet Mars? That's the outcome that Elon is betting on, at least, and we are already in the early stages of his plan to make human life multiplanetary. For the first time in human history, we are entering a window of possibility to extend our civilization onto a whole new planet, and it's thanks in large part to the ambition of Elon Musk, or the madness of Elon Musk, depends on how you look at it. Either way, let's get into the plan to put a human city on the red planet. Our most recent update from Elon Musk came at his live presentation from Starbase. This is a SpaceX testing facility at the southernmost point of the state of Texas on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. It's a location pretty far removed from civilization, with the exception of a quarter mile long row of houses, which are now majority owned by SpaceX. This is where the magic happens. This is the staging ground for the mission to Mars. You can actually take a look around for yourself. The area is still fully accessible to the public. Not that you should, but you can drive right up to the launch pad and rocket manufacturing facility. Just don't be a weirdo. Or you could tour the grounds from home on Google Street View. The car was just there in August 2021, so it's relatively updated. Anyway, the reason that Elon gave his presentation at Starbase is because this is where SpaceX is building a gigantic rocket called the Starship. This is the combination of a super heavy rocket booster with a multifunction spaceship on top. When it launches later this year, Starship will be the largest flying object in history. I know this is the point where some of you are going to try and mention the Hindenburg in the comments. The Hindenburg was a balloon. Balloons don't fly. They float. You've been debunked. But more importantly, this big effing rocket is also going to fly to Mars in this decade. And at some point in the not-so-distant future, it's going to take people there as well. The Starship is Elon Musk's answer to the concept of the Great Filter which is the boundary that a civilization must cross before it can become multiplanetary. In theory, if there was no great filter, then our galaxy would be like Star Wars, where everyone is just flying back and forth between different planets and systems on the regular. But since we have so far collected no legitimate evidence of spacefaring civilizations among the trillions of stars that form the Milky Way, then we can assume that there is some universal obstacle holding us all back, and that is the Great Filter. In Elon's mind, the most important step in crossing that boundary is for us to have a second planet that is no longer dependent on the original planet. That means more than just sending people to Mars. We need to send stuff along with them, resources and infrastructure to create a self-sustaining city on Mars. Elon has it figured out that we will need to transfer about 1 million tons of stuff from the Earth to Mars before we can reach the minimum requirement for being self-sustaining. And only the Starship is going to be capable of doing that. The plan at SpaceX is to mass produce the Starship at a high enough volume that we could have at least a thousand of them all in service at the same time. And each pairing of booster and ship will be rapidly reusable so rapid that each ship can deliver 100 tons of cargo to orbit three times in one day. Elon once promised that the Starship program will deliver 1,000 times more mass to orbit than every other rocket on Earth combined. Starship opens the window that makes this all possible. As Elon often says, that window might remain open for a long time, and hopefully it does, but it could also only stay open for a short time and that's why we need to do this as soon as we possibly can. This is the first time in Earth's 4.5 billion year history that this feat has even been remotely possible. Now, aside from that whole extending the light of consciousness thing that he does, Elon is promising that the journey to Mars will be an incredibly exciting adventure. But 
like crossing any new frontier, it will not be a comfortable or safe journey either. This is Elon Musk's sales pitch for going to Mars. It will be cramped, dangerous, difficult, very hard work, and you might die. Hope you like it. Elon wants to make sure everyone knows this will not be like some sort of an escape hatch from Earth to a new paradise. We're going somewhere incredibly dangerous and hostile. Elon says that Mars is a fixer-upper of a planet. It's going to take some work to make it easy to live there, but still, he does optimistically believe that one day we could make Mars a planet like Earth. From the new SpaceX renderings, we can see their first ideas of what that self-sustaining city on Mars might look like. Multiple starships cut through the thin Martian atmosphere to come down for landings at a Mars spaceport. We see a sprawling, low-rise settlement laid out in a valley between mountain peaks. There's a giant glass dome that seems to house a greenhouse or farm. And this is what the million tons of stuff would build. Now, I was looking around the internet for a way to try and contextualize one million tons of material. And what I found was the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the tallest building in the world, which reportedly weighs about 500,000 tons. So take the Burj Khalifa, double it, and then try to imagine that mass spread out over a bunch of short little Mars buildings. It starts to make sense, but it's going to take a lot to get there. So let's run some numbers quickly. If each starship carries 100 tons of cargo to Mars, then it's going to take 10,000 starship landings to reach 1 million tons. Let that sink in for a second. This is no small task that we are talking about here. With a fleet of 1,000 starships, that's only 10 trips each, right? But it's complicated by the Earth to Mars transit window, for which we would use something known as Hamann transfer orbit. This is the elliptical orbit used to transfer between two circular orbits around a central body. In this case, the Sun. We have a launch window for this transfer, but it only happens once every 26 months, and the journey time between the two planets is going to be somewhere between six and nine months. And it's more or less the same deal coming back. You have to wait for that window to open again. So round trip, Earth to Mars, we'd be looking at four to five years minimum. And that would mean about four to five decades to complete the mission. If we stick to the formula of 1,000 ships carrying 100 tons, that is. Of course, a lot can change over a few decades. New advancements with engines and material science can increase maximum capacity. And of course, we don't really expect SpaceX to just stop making ships once they hit 1,000. They'll obviously keep growing the fleet indefinitely. Maybe at some point along the way, they will invent a better vehicle than the Starship. Maybe there will be a new spaceport on the moon where SpaceX manufactures a new generation of giant cargo ship that would never be physically possible to build and launch from Earth. It's quite the rabbit hole once you start going down it. So landing a million tons of stuff on Mars and building a city, pretty damn cool. But let's go back to that bit where Elon said that one day we could make Mars a planet like Earth. That's a bit more complicated. Because when I imagine Mars being like the Earth, I imagine being able to walk outside and breathe the air. That wouldn't turn out so well on Mars as it stands right now. If you tried to walk on Mars without a spacesuit, you'd be hit by freezing cold temperature, a complete lack of breathable oxygen, and an extreme low pressure environment that would cause your bodily fluids to boil and vaporize. I don't know which would get you first, but it would suck either way. So to really fulfill Elon Musk's dream, we have to change the environment of Mars to be more like the Earth. That doesn't mean it needs to be like perfect Miami weather all the time, it just needs to come within the habitable zone for human beings. So how do we do that? Well, the biggest problem with Mars is that it suffered from a reserve greenhouse effect at some point in its past. Instead of greenhouse gases accumulating in the atmosphere and holding in the heat from the sun and maintaining pressure on the surface, most of those insulating gases just dissipated out into space. And the reason for that is probably magnetic fields. The Earth's hot rotating metal core creates our magnetosphere that works to trap high energy particles from the sun far away from the planet's surface. Those solar winds never reach us down here, and that keeps our atmosphere intact. Mars doesn't have a magnetic field right now, and that's allowed the solar winds to blow away most of the atmosphere 
reducing the surface pressure on Mars to about 1% of that on Earth, which is not suitable for life as we know it because it is physically impossible for water to exist in a liquid state at such a low pressure. It goes straight from frozen to gas. We know that there is frozen ice on Mars at the poles, and we know that there is frozen carbon dioxide as well in the surface of Mars. So if we could heat those elements above the freezing point on Mars, then they would vaporize and add their density to the atmosphere and help to begin a greenhouse effect, which would begin to terraform Mars into a more Earth-like environment. How do we do that? Elon Musk has joked about nuking Mars. It's a good idea in theory. Detonating a giant bomb or a series of bombs over the pole would superheat the surface below and vaporize anything that's frozen there. It's an extreme method and it probably wouldn't work either. There likely wouldn't be enough frozen water and CO2 at the pole to have a significant effect on the atmosphere. It might increase the temperature and pressure, but not enough to be worthwhile. Another idea would be to rig up some giant mirrors in orbit around Mars and use them to concentrate heat from the sun onto the surface. With enough really big ass mirrors, we might be able to heat the entire surface of Mars all at once and release all of those frozen gases into the atmosphere. That might work okay, not great, but it's believed that we might be able to get the atmospheric pressure up to around 8 psi. On Earth, our surface pressure is about 15 psi. That's what we like. But once we get the process started on Mars, then we could try some other techniques to help it along. We can locate asteroids that contain the ingredients we want and redirect them into the surface of Mars, where they'll explode and contribute to the density of the atmosphere. Maybe we could scoop up hydrocarbons from the atmosphere of other moons and planets like Titan or Venus and import them to Mars. If we can at least get the pressure and the temperature up on Mars, then we could be comfortable enough to walk around without the need for a bulky spacesuit. We'd need an oxygen mask for sure, and probably goggles, maybe even some kind of skin-tight condom suit depending on how toxic the new atmosphere turns out to be, but it would at least be a good first step. So that's the reason why Elon Musk has the sense of urgency about this that he does. If we're going to make Mars a legit second home, just like the Earth, then it's going to take a really long time. There is no shortcut involved. If he's lucky, Elon might live long enough to see his city finished if everything goes perfectly according to plan, and it's going to be an even longer time after that before we can even start to get Mars into any state that's considered habitable. We have a window to get this done, but we don't know how long it stays open for. And that's kind of scary. But at the same time, we've got hope that people like Elon Musk and his team of incredibly smart people at SpaceX are not wasting any time in getting started. So I guess that leaves us with one question. Who's ready to sign up for a job in Elon's Mars City? Let us know below. Before we go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our newest patrons. You can see them on the screen now. You are all fantastic people, and we appreciate your support. If you'd like to join us on Patreon, check out the link in the description. There are some cool perks in it for you, but more than anything, you'll receive the eternal gratitude of everyone here on the Tesla Space team, and know that you are helping us out on our quest to make the best and most informative videos possible. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.